friends. This is our last week of our Summer Refresh series. We learned so much this month about thanks, but we're not quite done yet. This morning, we're going to look at how we can live out our thanks to God. We started this month in the Old Testament learning about a boy named David who grew up to be a king. And we're going to see a really neat way that another person's thankfulness connects to the life of David. If you were with us yesterday during Rock Kids, you heard the story of a lady named Hannah. Just in case you missed it, and for those of us who were there, to help us remember it even more, let's talk a little bit about Hannah and what we can learn from her about being thankful. In the Bible, we are told that every year Hannah would take a trip to the tabernacle, um, the place where God's people would go to worship Him before the temple was built. The Bible tells us that on this trip, there was another lady who would make fun of Hannah because she wasn't able to have any children. And each year, Hannah would leave crying and upset because it hurts when people say mean things to us, right? One year on this trip to the tabernacle, Hannah gets up after dinner and she goes to pray. I'll show you a little picture in one of our Bibles. So Hannah goes to pray. And in her prayer, Hannah makes a promise to God, saying, If you will look upon my sorrow or my sadness and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire life. Hannah was hurting, but rather than staying focused on how she was feeling, she goes to God and she asks for his help. The Bible tells us that within that year, Hannah gave birth to a son, and she named him Samuel. Samuel means God heard, and Hannah knew that her son Samuel was a gift from God. Hannah had to be so thankful, but remember, Hannah had made a promise to God that she would give her child back to him. That couldn't have been easy, right? Friends, think of something that you are very thankful for something that you love and you're so grateful that you have, if we told you to give it away, would that be easy for you? Probably not. But Hannah, she keeps her promise that she made to God. Hannah says, I asked the Lord to give me this boy and he has granted my request. Now I am giving him to the Lord and he will belong to the Lord for his whole life. And they worship the Lord there. Because Hannah is so thankful to God, she gives the very thing that she's thankful for back to the Lord. She doesn't do it in sadness or in pain, but she does it as an act of worship or a way to praise God and give Him thanks. Because Hannah kept her promise and gave the thing that she was most thankful for back to God, God uses her son Samuel in really big, powerful ways. As Samuel gets older, God talks to him and uses Samuel to speak to God's people and lead them back to God. And God tells Samuel that David, remember little David from the beginning of the month, the one who taught us that everything we have comes from the Lord? That David is the one he chooses to be the next king of Israel after Saul. Samuel gets to be the one who goes and anoints David as the next king. Samuel is part of David's story, and it's because Hannah was so thankful and gave her son back to the Lord. Our bottom line today is God can do big things when we thank Him, just like He did with Hannah and Samuel and David. What has God given you that you are thankful for? Are you willing to give it to Him to use? Are you thankful in your words only, or will you live it out in your actions, giving thanks to God by giving to Him what was already His in the first place? Those are some really big questions. And if you aren't completely sure that you understand, talk to the grown-ups in your life about what all this means. You can even pray and ask God to help you to understand so that you can live the way that He has created you to live. Now we're going to worship together. And after we worship, Miss Christy has more to share with our older friends. Right. 
Good morning, Rock Kids, and thank you for joining us for Wake Up and Worship. We are wrapping up our final week of refreshing in the way we represent Jesus through our thanks. We have learned so much, and if you were with us yesterday, you know that this is our rest week. We're trying to figure out how do we live out thanks so that we're representing Jesus each and every day by the way that we thank God. Yesterday, we looked at the story of Hannah, who desperately wanted a child. She didn't have any children. And she prays to God and he answers her. Well, Hannah doesn't just show her thanks to God by telling him thank you. She doesn't do it just through her words, but Hannah actually does it through her actions, giving the very thing that God blessed her with back to the Lord. Now, that's crazy. She gives up her son for God's use, but Hannah is so thankful for God's generous gift that nothing can stop her from doing that, thanking God through her actions. And because of that, God uses her gift. He uses it powerfully. Samuel is a prophet who's used in major ways in the Old Testament. 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel are about him, Hannah's son. All of that happens because Hannah is willing to give God back the blessing that he gave her. We learn that God can do big things when we thank him. God wants to work through your giving of thanks to him. But this really happens in more than just words. If you are thankful to God, if you love him and you have true thanks for him and all that he has done for you, it should make you want to do more for him than just say, oh, thank you, God. I'm so appreciative of all that you've done. Thank you for Jesus, right? Like you live your life for him. You should want to give him everything. Our thanks for God should really show in our actions, in the way that we live and what we do. This week, I want you to think about this question. Am I thankful enough to give God anything he asks for? Now, that's a tough question. Really think about it. Is there anything that God could ask you for that you would say no to? Or are you willing to give it all to him? Now, you're probably not going to mail care packages to God in heaven. That's not how that works. And he probably won't ask you for your son, but he did ask for Abraham's. And so all things are possible. But God might prompt you to give something that you love away so that he can use it in someone else's lives. Like, I have a friend who, um, she had this Bible that she loved. She had written down all her notes and highlighted verses, and it was just super important to her. And one day she ran into somebody and she felt God say, give them your Bible. And she didn't want to. It was her Bible. It was a blessing to her. It was something so special. It was God's word. But she obeyed and she gave it away. 
because there was nothing she could hold back from God because he had done so much for her, it all belonged to him already. He might ask you to give up your time. Like maybe you have plans to go somewhere, but you feel God whisper to your heart, you know what, don't leave. Stay here and talk to that person. Maybe that's gonna cost you the thing that you were gonna go do. Maybe it was something super fun that you were looking forward to. If God asked you to, would you give up your time for him? Would you stop what you're doing, the fun things you had planned, and change it so that you could give your time to God as a way to show him that you're thankful so that other people might come to know him? He also might ask you to give up your talent for him, not like a stop doing it because your talents came from God, but to use it for his glory and not your own. Maybe you are really awesome at something that could make you a lot of money, and God says, you know what? Don't go get some super awesome job with a great big paycheck for this talent. Instead, come work for me. Come be part of the church and use your talent to serve others. You might not get paid, or you might not get paid very much. Are you willing to do that, to give up even your talents, your time, your treasures for the Lord? Is there anything God could ask you for that you would say no to? And then sometimes he asks you to do that with money. Sometimes you're blessed with a lot of financial resources, a lot of money. And God might say, you know what? Just give it all to me. It's all mine. Would you say yes? Is there anything you would hold back from God? At the beginning of the month, we talked about how being thankful is really living with God as Lord of your life. Letting him guide and direct you. Doing everything for him because it's all his. And he gave up Jesus for you. He already gave you everything. And so there's nothing we should hold back from him. And so if you answer that question like, oh, God could ask me for anything except for this. Ask yourself, that thing that you're not willing to give to the Lord, is that actually what you're living with as Lord of your life? Have you made it an idol in front of God? There shouldn't be anything that you hold so tight to that you wouldn't give it to the Lord if he asked you for it. God wants to use you to do amazing things. And to make that possible, he blesses you in big ways. He blesses you with everything you need to make those big things happen. He'll give you time, talents, treasures. He'll give you resources and the abilities that you need to do what he has planned for your life. And he wants to do something big using you. But for God to use you, you have to be willing to give all of what God gave you back to him so that it's all for his glory, not for your own. So it's all building his kingdom and not the kingdom of your own life. Are you willing to give your blessings back to God? It's really hard. We're naturally selfish. We want to do the opposite of that. When we're blessed, we want to keep it for ourselves. We might worry that there won't be more. Like if I give this away, then I won't have it anymore. And then what am I going to do? Or we might convince ourselves that God gave us this blessing because he wanted us to have it. And so we should really keep it because that's what God would want. What? <laughs> we can convince ourselves of anything like that because we're selfish and we don't want to share. But what would Jesus do? 2 Corinthians 8, 9 tells us, it says, You know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty he could make you rich. So Jesus had it all, every blessing imaginable when he was in heaven. There was nothing that he didn't have. Absolutely rich, right? He had it all. He was God in heaven, and he willingly gave it all up so that you and I, who were poor, had nothing, were lost in our sin. Now let's get this straight. Even if you were the richest person on the planet, but you didn't have Jesus, you would be poor, right? Because the one thing you need is salvation, a relationship with God. And so Jesus, who has it all, even that relationship with God, gives it all up, lays it all down, so that we would no longer be poor, but we would be found rich in him because of him and his death on the cross that paid the price for our sin. So what would Jesus do? He wouldn't hold anything back. He would give everything he has so that you could live. That's exactly what he did. And so will you hold anything back from God? For his use? Is there anything you wouldn't give him? Because that might be the very thing that God uses to turn someone else to him. God can do big things when we thank him through our actions, when we give back to him the blessings he gives us because of our gratitude. That might be the very thing he uses to turn someone else to him. So could you give God, even the thing you love the most, could you give it to him so that someone else might be saved? That's how God wants to use you. He blesses you, but then you have a chance to bless him in return 
by giving it back to him and showing him your thanks. And then he turns around and he uses it to go change someone else's life so they'll follow him too and do the same. It's so cool, friends. We're going to learn about that all week long in our devos. And then join us again on Friday as we talk about this more, as we wrap up resting in thanks, really living out being thankful to God. I'll see you on Friday. Thank you.